Though it may feel like ambiguous, non-committal endings are becoming increasingly common in cinema nowadays, there is a reason for it. The good ones get the discussion going, and it never really stops being interesting no matter how long it's gone on for. The following 10 movies then, all surefire classics in one way or another, ask the viewer to do all of the mental legwork by figuring things out for themselves, and we love them for it. So, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies that made you work out the answer yourself. Number 10, Blade Runner. The question, is Deckard a human or a replicant? This question has tortured Blade Runner fans ever since the film's original 1982 theatrical release, and Ridley Scott's subsequent director's cut and final cut only further fueled the debate. The main evidence pointing to Deckard himself being a replicant is the fact that Gaff leaves him an origami unicorn at the end of the movie. Considering that Deckard had a dream involving a unicorn earlier on in the film, it implies that this character is aware of Deckard's dreams due to him being a replicant. Opponents of this theory, though, argue that it could merely mean that humans and replicants share the same dreams, further blurring the line between what is and isn't human. Plus, Deckard being saved and spared by Batty at the very end of the movie is robbed of so much of its emotional impact if he is indeed just another replicant. Somewhat predictably and aptly though, Blade Runner 2049, the sequel, refused to shed further light on Deckard's identity, though the fact that he didn't run through walls as K did has been interpreted as further evidence that he is, in fact, human. Number 9. American Psycho The question, how much of Patrick Bateman's killing spree, if any, actually happened, and how much of it was merely imagined by him? American Psycho concludes with murderer Patrick Bateman going on a hilariously over-the-top killing spree as the police chase him down and he eventually makes a desperate final confession for all of his murderous misdeeds. Then the following reveal shows that there's actually no physical proof of Bateman's acts, and that his secretary Jean discovered profane scribblings in his journal, which seemed to suggest that his rampage was pure fantasy. There's even the suggestion that Bateman isn't even who he says he is, as the film ends on a chillingly non-committal note. Some believe that Bateman's rampage happened mostly as depicted, but his delusional mind exaggerated some of the sillier aspects. Others feel that he killed everyone minus Paul Allen, who was said to be alive at the end of the movie, and some suspect that he didn't even kill a single person. The film's slippery logic and unreliable protagonist make all three theories valid in their own way. Though the filmmakers and actors have stated conflicting theories as to which one they think is legit. Number 8. The Shining The question, what was the meaning behind the old Overlook Hotel photograph which features Jack Torrance despite being taken in 1921, some 60 years before the movie's events took place? Director Stanley Kubrick has suggested that this scene was meant to imply that Jack was the reincarnation of a previous hotel caretaker, which lines up with the spectral butler Grady creepily telling him, you've always been the caretaker. Some fans, however, have theorized that the picture represents Jack's soul being absorbed by the hotel, and the other party guests in the picture are perhaps even other people claimed by the Overlook itself. This would also fit well with Grady's line, that Jack is trapped in that single moment in the photograph forevermore, destined to always be there now. So whether you take Kubrick at his word or accept that a creator's work no longer explicitly belongs to them once it's out in the wild, it's a tantalizing mystery that's baffled fans for almost 40 years. Number 7. Birdman The question, what happened to Riggan after he climbed onto the ledge of his hospital room? There are a bunch of theories here, so let's run them down. Some believe that the character died from shooting himself on stage, and the film's final scenes are nothing more than his dying hallucination, which would explain why it's almost comically idyllic. Conversely, there's the rather out there theory that suggests that Riggan can actually fly, which at least makes a little more sense as we do see his daughter Sam looking up to the sky after clearly not seeing his corpse at the foot of the hospital. Perhaps the most plausible suggestion though is that the character really did jump out the window and die, and Sam's reaction is merely her entering a fantasy world where her father flies away, rather than splats violently on the pavement below. Unlike Kubrick, director Alejandro Inarritu has refused to offer his own interpretation of the finale, and given the film's generally surreal quality, it's hard to fully commit to one defining theory. Number 6. Total Recall The question, was Douglas Quaid actually a secret agent, or was his trip to Mars merely an implanted memory? Total Recall giddily plays with reality throughout its runtime. 
goading the audience to consider whether the events they're watching are actually playing out at all, or merely the result of a fabricated memory within Quaid's mind. After all, when Quaid goes to recall, the shell plot of the movie is basically laid out to him. And a technician even mentions the blue sky from the very end of the film, suggesting that we are experiencing this false memory all the way to the credits. Some fans believe, though, that the schizoid embolism Quaid appears to suffer is merely part of the fantasy to better convince the recipient that the secret agent adventure is legit. Others, of course, are dead set on Quaid's adventure being real, while director Paul Verhoeven won't give one side credence over the other, as suits the film's reality-warping core theme wonderfully. Number 5. Lost in Translation The question, what did Barbara whisper in Charlotte's ear? When asked about the famously ambiguous ending to her film, writer-director Sofia Coppola stated that the line was improvised by Bill Murray himself, and only he and Scarlett Johansson know exactly what was said between their characters. However, a video emerged online in 2007, which claimed to reveal the whisper through post-processing techniques, with Murray apparently saying, quote, I have to be leaving, but I won't let that come between us, okay? End quote. Yet, the muddy quality of this audio means that it's hardly definitive proof. While there have been countless other attempts by internet sleuths to decode the source audio, not one of them has been especially convincing. We know he says something poignant and meaningful, but beyond that, it's forever destined to be a mystery. Number 4. The Thing The question, at the end of the film, who is infected by the extraterrestrial life form, McCready or Childs? John Carpenter's ferocious sci-fi horror film ends on an all-timer classic cliffhanger, reinforcing the movie's overarching theme of paranoia by having the two remaining men committed to freezing to death to ensure that the alien doesn't escape out into the world. Most of the prominent fan theories out there seem to point towards Childs probably being the thing though, as his breath isn't really visible in the low temperatures, which could suggest that he's not human. Also, a more adventurous suggestion is that McCready placed gasoline in the bottle of the alcohol, and when Childs drank it without spitting it out, it indicated that he was indeed the thing, which wouldn't know the difference in taste between the two substances. Some believe this is why McCready laughs after Childs takes a sip, as he finally knows the truth. The mutually assured destruction on the basis of distrust is pivotal to the ending's bleak power though, so while it's fun to try and figure it out, the lack of concrete answer is kind of the entire point. Number 3. Inception The question, was Cobb still dreaming or not? Christopher Nolan's ingenious sci-fi thriller had just about everyone debating its agonizingly ambiguous final image, where the spinning top totem is either still spinning or beginning to wobble, depending on your interpretation. The important thing to remember, of course, is that this was Mal's totem, not Cobb's, which has been theorized to, in fact, be his wedding ring. Nolan suspiciously obscures the ring from view during several pivotal scenes, presumably to keep the film's mystery keenly intact. Likewise, the director himself has refused to confirm the truth, but he has noted that viewers need to recognize that in those final moments, Cobb has just accepted whatever reality has been presented in front of him. At this point, he doesn't care. He just wants to be with his kids, whatever form that takes. And dream or not, he has embraced this wholeheartedly, and that's seemingly more crucial than what the nature of his reality actually is. Number two, under the skin. The question, where did the alien creature come from and what's she doing on Earth? Jonathan Glazer's 2013 masterpiece is one of the greatest sci-fi films of the 21st century so far. And a big reason for that is how terrifically, ominously vague it is. Scarlett Johansson's otherworldly entity shows up out of nowhere, resembles a human, and spends her time in Glasgow trying to figure out humanity. Where she came from, how she arrived on Earth, and her intentions are never even remotely explained, giving the audience an awful amount of leeway to cobble together their own theories. Though Michelle Faber's book has its own set of answers, given how unfaithful the movie generally is to it, it's not really reasonable to expect any meaningful parity between the two sources. In the book, the alien is sent to Earth by a corporation on her home planet to farm humans for food, which would explain how much screen time is devoted to her feeding process in the film. However, the film also makes no indication whatsoever that she's stockpiling any of the human remains. Number 1. Rashomon The question, who is telling the truth? Akira Kurosawa's 1950 drama is the ultimate cinematic statement about the flimsy reliability of eyewitness testimony and the fleeting quality of truth. 
In regard to the central case of the murdered samurai, the stories of the bandit, the wife, the samurai as told through a medium, and the woodcutter are all subject to their own fair share of scrutiny. And the entire point seems to be that, due to their own agendas, none of the witnesses can bring themselves to deliver a proper, truthful rendition of events. The fun of the movie is in trying to figure out whose story is the correct one, or the most correct at least. But if Kurosawa had concluded the film with a concrete answer, it would have torpedoed the movie's brilliant meditation on the elusiveness of the supposed truth. If nothing else, it provokes a fascinating discussion afterwards and remains fiercely provocative so many decades later. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Where do you come down on these movie endings? And are there any other hotly debated ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, can you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.